What is up, my fellow viewers? Colton Tackle on Sonic and OKKO OK Fanatic 2021 here again with part four of the 2021 edition of the Dell Dimension 4600. Now, thing is, I did not feel like doing a part of this walkthrough yesterday because, well, I I was not in the mood at, at the moment, but at least we're here for another part. So, in the last part, we took a look at the previous two Microsoft Money tutorials, which were on, you know, managing your taxes and about checks and deposits. We're gonna take a look at the lifetime planner and the, the budget planner tutorials. So, let's log in. By the way, before I start, this was sponsored by these two Backyard Against DVDs. Polka Palace Party and Cave Party. So let's just go into the My Computer application and go find the Microsoft Money folder in Program Files. So I just want to say about the Microsoft Money tutorials and the Windows XP tour, I think those are like my childhood, of course. Remember them for a lot of years, and I still remember them today because, you know. I still, ha I still have this computer, still works like a charm, and it really does a good job too. Like, I'm just saying, it just, it works really freaking good. Okay, let's go to the C drive, local disk, C drive right here. I've got to turn the light off when we get to the Microsoft Money AV help folder. It will have any minute. Hello? P key, please? Okay, there we go. So, let's see. Program files. This computer is freaking slow, my god. Freaking stupid computer. Don't go slow. Okay, there we go. Microsoft Money. Media. AV Help. Going to 09LI. Gotta turn the lights off first because we're doing that for Microsoft Money Tutorial at the moment. Thank goodness I got the I got that cable upright. So here we go. The lifetime planner tutorial on Microsoft Money. Here we go. I've been worrying lately. What's going to happen to our finances when we send the kids to college? And when can we afford to retire? We can set up our long-term financial goals and get tailored information with Microsoft Money's Lifetime Planner. That's great. How does it work? First, we enter information about ourselves, our income, investments, and assets. Then we enter our living expenses and also any special expenses we expect to have in the future. Oh, things like college tuition, the sailboat, our vacation home exactly then money shows us whether we'll actually have the cash for these expenses if our forecast doesn't work at first money gives us suggestions on how to improve it then when we're done creating our plan money shows us how to make it a reality where did you start I just started here at the top and worked through each page in order so I could be sure I wouldn't leave anything out but where did you get all those numbers well, money automatically included information from the accounts we've already set up. But there were a few places where I had to get our financial papers. Okay, so what were the results? Our plan doesn't work just yet. See, our forecast goes below zero right here. Well, we can't have that. But we can fix this. First, let's double-click that year to zoom in on the problem. Oh, we're both retired that year. So how are we going to afford tuition, retire early, and buy a vacation home? Let's use Money's personalized suggestions to refine our plan. Let's see. Money says we could save more money or reduce our retirement living expenses. Or we could retire later. No, no. Retiring early is really important to me. Isn't there anything else we could do? Well, it also says we could buy a less expensive vac- Freaking computer, stop being so slow and just move on. We got a tutorial to get past. So, 
stuff that's in the way. Give me a second, please. Let me rewind this for a bit. No, no. Retiring early is really important to me. Isn't there anything else we could do? Well, it also says we could buy a less expensive vacation home than we had planned. Let's try that. So, in the assumptions page, we go to vacation home and click purchase price. Let's say 150 k That should be good enough. We can also look more closely at other future expenses. As much as I hate the thought, how about if we put off buying our sailboat? Okay. We can just exclude it from our plan for now. So we can include it again later. Right. We're just doing this as a what-if scenario. Let's click results. Then, comparing plans. Now we can compare our changes against the original plan and see how much we've improved. Let's check that bottom line again. Looks like we still need to tweak the numbers to get the plan exactly the way we want. But we're getting closer. Remember, Money's suggestions also said we could save more. Okay. Let's go back to the Savings and Investments page for that. In Savings Contributions, we can increase how much we're going to set aside for savings. Now how does it work? Perfect. With those adjustments, we can afford to send all the kids to college, retire at 60, and buy our vacation home. Are we done now? Pretty much. Having a plan is great, but not unless we follow it. Now we go to the Action Plan, where we can set up reminders about our progress. There are also lots of great suggestions, like how much to save each month and what types of investments we can make. And we can always come back and change something in our plan if our situation changes. This way, we can ensure that our financial plan will really work. And we can feel secure knowing that our dreams and plans for the future can really happen. Moving on, it's time to go on to learning about creating a budget so let's just get to that also sorry for the sorry for the pausing in that one part of the lifetime planner tutorial just ignore the pause if you want to if you're using a mobile phone or tablet and you're using YouTube make sure you just try to skip the amount of seconds with your finger or if you're using a laptop or desktop computer and you're using YouTube there make sure you use the right arrow to skip through seconds forward so use the right arrow to skip forward and the, the left one to skip backwards so enough of that it's time to get on to the create a budget tutorial let me just minimize this my mouse isn't doing any good and we just try to there we go let's just let's just start here we go really want to make more conscious decisions about how we spend our money. I know. We need to have enough to pay our bills and meet our expenses. And we need to make sure we have enough reserve for unexpected expenses that come up during the year. Sounds like we're talking about creating a budget. You know, we can use the budget planner in Microsoft Money. Right. It walks us through all the steps. This page gives us the rundown. Look, this says that Money can use information from categories and amounts we've already entered. Let's do that then. Pre-filling our budget will save us some work because money will calculate budget estimates for us. Okay, but I'm curious. What if we didn't have any transactions? Or what if we wanted to ignore our transactions and set up a budget completely from scratch? If we didn't have any transactions, we'd get a budget based on a standard set of categories and our scheduled bills and paychecks. We could then fill in other amounts ourselves. Because we do have a history of transactions, we can choose whether or not we want to pre-fill our budget categories. So we start with income. Money fills in any income amounts we've already provided, including our scheduled paychecks and deposits. See, here's the total for our salaries. If we had any other sources of income, like bonuses or overtime, we could enter them here too. If we want, we can change any of these income amounts. Now we click Next. Expenses. Anything special here? It's just what you think it is. Our monthly bills and expenses. So how do we know that this is really a good amount to budget for food? Just like with income, money fills in amounts based on our past spending and our scheduled bills and transfers. We can take a closer look at our transactions for food, either in a chart, like this, 
or in a list like this. And if we click edit, we can change any budget amount we want. I think this is a reasonable estimate. We can always come back and change it later if we find we're eating out more. Or her practicing our gourmet cooking. Our budgeted expenses can even account for our occasional spending. You mean like house repairs and car insurance? Again, money calculates our past spending in these categories. But how do we budget for car maintenance? We shouldn't have to fix the cars every month. This is an average of what we've been spending on car maintenance for the past couple of years. And see, even though it's on a yearly basis rather than monthly, we're still budgeting for it. This is a reasonable yearly amount for car maintenance. These categories look exactly like the ones we use when entering transactions in our accounts. They are. Look, it even has the custom categories we've set up for ourselves. This must be how the budget and our accounts are linked together. Right. And these broader items are the budget groups set up by money. I get it. This will help us see spending summaries for these major items in budget charts and reports. Well, this is good news. Our budget works, and we have money left over after expenses. What do you want to do with unbudgeted income? Hmm, good question. If we just want to make sure we have enough to pay our expenses, we can say we'll spend it all. But we can also save the excess for occasional or large expenses. So to make sure we have enough for our next vacation, or even next year's holiday spending, we can put it here. And then maybe we won't have to use our credit cards as much as we have in the past. Now we can see whether our savings goal works with our budget. Good, it does. Here's a budget summary and a chart showing the breakdown. Look, our total monthly expenses. That's good to know. And here's our savings goal. What would we do if our budget didn't work? If we were spending more than we have? We'd probably need to lower our budgeted expenses and try it again. Money does the calculations and tells us whether we balance or not. Well, we have a good budget. Now what? Anytime we want to see how we're doing, we can come to this page for a summary. It tells us whether we're within or over budget. What if one month we need to take money from one budget category to use for another? Like when Aaron sprung that school trip on us at the last minute. We can reallocate budgeted expenses between categories. Reallocating keeps us from breaking our budget. And if we need to really revise our budget, we can always go through whatever part of the budget setup process we want. It would be great if we could know in advance when we're reaching our budget limits. We can do that. We can set our spending limits in money according to our budget amounts. As we enter transactions related to the budget categories, money shows us one of these spending thermometers. Finally, we know where our money is going, and we'll be able to keep our expenses under control. So that's it. That, that's it. We're going we're gonna to stop here for today, but anyway... Dang it, I accidentally minimized it. Let me just try to close it. There we go. It's time to shut down for today, but... Let's click turn off computer. Before I click the turn off button, let me just try to... Let's just try to get the lights turned back on first. There we go. Lights are turned back on now. Let's turn off the computer now, so... That's going to conclude it for part 4 of the 2021 edition of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Yep, that's, the, that's it for the 2021 edition of part 4 of this walkthrough. So, stay tuned next time for part 5, where we will do the next two Microsoft Money Tutorials. So yeah, this is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKQ, Fanatic 2021, signing off. Have a great time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, my folks. See you next time.